In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In 1979, a mother was struggling to find help for her son who suffered from schizophrenia. She reached out in different directions, doing everything she could think of, but kept getting the same message over and over, which is that what she and her son were going through was her fault, as if some deficiency in her parenting was causing his symptoms. Eventually, that mother found other moms and dads who were having the same experience. They gathered around a kitchen table to talk about what to do, and what emerged from their conversations was NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which is now the nation's leading voice on mental health. I tell this story because today is the start of Mental Illness Awareness Week. If you open up today's newspaper, you'll see a signature campaign put together by our local chapter of NAMI in Rockford, which says, I care about someone who lives with a mental illness. Chances are you do too. One in five Americans will experience a mental illness in his or her lifetime. That's a lot of us. Together, we can fight the stigma that too often keeps people from getting help. Let's stand up for the people we care about. Over 400 people in Rockford signed this campaign, and many signatures you'll notice are from people in our congregation. Because it is so important, today I want to divert from our regular readings to raise awareness around the issue and to get us talking more about mental illness as a congregation. Thinking about those parents who started NAMI, or parents and families struggling today, I can't imagine how hard that must have been. Trying to do all you can for your child, feeling the stress on you and your family, how some days just making it through is a challenge, then on top of it all, getting blamed for it. In a way, it reminds me of a story in the Bible about an interaction with Jesus and the Pharisees, not so unlike the one we heard earlier. Upon seeing a man who was born blind, the Pharisees go to Jesus and say, whose fault is it that this man was born blind? Was it his sin? or his parents? Obviously, their question reveals a lack of the medical understanding that we have today. But what hasn't changed that much from their time to ours is the tendency to stigmatize something that we don't understand, to link the suffering to a shortcoming in the person or the people who are afflicted. To the Pharisees' question of whose sin caused the illness, Jesus' response is neither. He tells them that the young man's blindness isn't caused by sin, but that nonetheless, it's an opportunity to give glory to God. And with that, he heals the young man. How relieving that must have been for the boy and his parents, who had been pushed to the margins of society. Not only to be cured, but to have a respected leader say that it was nothing they did or didn't do. When things go wrong, it's very human to look for someone or something to blame. In some cases, this is a good thing. Linking causation can help us diagnose a problem. Like if we identify that the dusty house is causing the allergies, we dust the house and the problem is solved. Other times, though, looking for something to blame is a defense mechanism used to distance ourselves, to reassure ourselves that it can't happen to us. But this is a false sense of security. Our best efforts to live a good life 
still don't protect us from the many things in life that are outside of our control. And mental illness is one of those things. Though the causes vary from biological to environmental to genetic factors, no one wants to be afflicted by a mental illness. No one asks for it. It happens for reasons beyond our control. But when we stigmatize it, it makes it that much harder for people to get the support they need. It distances us from each other in a time that we need to come together. If we want to end the stigma associated with mental illness, one of the best things that we can do is be educated about it ourselves. This means knowing who is affected and how. Like that one in five adults experience mental illness each year. That 20% of youth ages 13 to 18 live with mental illness. That 26% of people without homes have a serious mental illness. And that 24% of people in prison have a recent health condition. That suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the U.S., the third leading cause of death in youth ages 10 to 24, that rates are rising significantly among the elderly, or that each day, 18 to 22 veterans die by suicide. As the statistics show, it's an area that needs our attention. Another thing to keep in mind is that mental illness is not a one-size-fits-all category. It can affect people at different times in life, and the same diagnosis may look different from one person to the next. For some, it can be a struggle to get through the day. It can be acutely painful or dulling to where nothing is felt. It can take away motivation, unleash overwhelming emotions, or bring about undesired thoughts and feelings. And because there may be no physical signs, we may have no idea that another person is struggling. And that itself sometimes makes it harder for someone to get help. But even with the variations in what mental illness looks like, and even though we still have so much to learn, we need to understand that mental illness is an illness. It's not something made up or in someone's head. It's an illness as real as any other, like cancer or disease, and it's an illness that some people die from. The good news is that there is help available. Treatment options are getting better every day, and finding the right combination of things whether counseling, medicine, diet, exercise, a support group, or someone you can talk honestly with, can make a huge difference. We can be part of making these kinds of helps available by knowing what resources exist. In our area, a great place to turn is NAMI. They offer free support groups and training, and they are well connected to what's available in our area. I've contacted them several times, and I've always had good results. We can also support people who are struggling. We can offer practical help, like a ride to an appointment, give encouragement, or make ourselves available to listen. We can also offer support through our ministries, like the Jubilee Center, which is a community of support for people who suffer from chronic mental illness. And this week, we can show our support by attending the Harvest Fest Jubilee fundraiser or the rally at Davis Park on Friday. Additionally, we all can use our platforms to spread positive messages of caring and acceptance. We can use our own experiences. When we are open about our struggles, it can be a light to others in their dark times. And if we are the ones struggling today, let us not minimize what we are going through, but give ourselves the compassion, support, and understanding that we would give another person. 
Finally, and this is the most important thing, as described by the NAMI literature, we can treat or regard the person, not the illness. People who suffer from mental illness should not be defined by their illness. That they have an illness is just one thing about them, but it's not the sum of who they are. If we think about the way Jesus exemplified this, he dealt with people who had different illnesses and demons who were stigmatized. While they didn't have the language for it then, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them suffered from mental illness. When other people wanted to send these individuals away, Jesus said no, and he insisted that they be treated like people. People to be valued, people to be loved, and people to be known. He is the model for us in how we treat any person that society would shame, blame, or push to the outskirts. To follow him in this means that we don't look down on people who are struggling or their families, but see them for who they are and not what they're afflicted by. One in five people experience a mental illness each year. That's not some people out there. Statistically, that's a good number of people who are here today. It's a lot of us, and it touches us all. And we all have a role to play in things getting better. Together, we can fight the stigma that too often prevents people from getting help. Together, we can make a difference. Amen.